When I began um, vocation and preaching, I um, started at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Um, Reverend Dr. Grand Allen Seward was my pastor. And um, it was at the age of uh, 18 where I felt this, um, this burning desire, this yearning um, internally that God wanted something more um, out of my life than what I was doing. But then I talked to my pastor about what I felt was going on. And, um, and he, he sent me to the Conference of the Ministry at the Colgate Rochester Divinity School in Rochester, New York. And um, through that, I got that discerning and understanding that God was calling me to preach, but not only to preach, but specifically to pastor. And, um, and from there, he took me under his wings and started teaching me and helped me to understand what this whole uh, vocation of preaching is all about. I preached my first trial sermon um, January 15th, 1988 at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Newark. The trial sermon was uh, entitled, uh, you know, A Young Man on the Mission for Christ coming out of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said it was like fire. Oh, it was like fire. Shut up in my voice. And I just said, sit still. I have to go out and preach, go claim the word that the Lord has given you. Now that I look back at it, it was more of a, uh, a sense of a young, young fellow ragged trying to step out of this new call that God has placed on my life and knowing that God was telling me to keep on keeping on. That seemed to be the, uh, the theme throughout the whole sermon. And I believe it was a, a good sermon. Folks said it was a good sermon, but uh, of course my mentor felt that, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And from there, he saw to it that I would prepare myself uh, to become a good preacher and a good pastor um, as God was calling me into this vocation called ministry. When I first got called to the Great Abyssinia Baptist Church, it wasn't something that he took on on his own. Um, he didn't get there and think that it was something that Alan Potts was doing. He knew that uh, taking on the uh, pastorate of the Great Abyssinian Baptist Church was God's guidance and um, God's doing. Um, so it wasn't that Alan did it. He knew that it was uh, God doing it for him. It was a sense of uh, fear and trepidation because I did not know um, how I would be able to mount up to do what God is calling me to do in this new assignment. They, the pulpit was vacant and they were just really at the time looking for ministers to come in and to preach on Sundays while they went through their um, process of searching for a new pastor. Yeah, their focus was really trying to see how we could uh, build upon the legacy that went on before I got here. Um, they wanted to continue the growth. Of, of what was started. I was called um, one day by um, the musician Leon Lumpkin to see if I was available uh, one April to come on the first Sunday to uh, preach and to serve communion uh, for them because they needed an ordained pastor to serve communion. And I, I um, accepted and I came and I preached. And from there, um, um, Great Abyssinia I liked me, liked my presentation and all, and from then they asked if I would submit my information to become a candidate for the pulpit. Uh, November 15th of 1999, I came here, presented myself as a candidate uh, for the pulpit, preached for them, and then on that next day uh, they took a vote and uh, voted me as being their next pastor, which and uh, the Lord blessed uh, ever since then. But um, in, us, in us coming here, we were young. And they were excited because they were, you know, without a pastor and their pastor had just um, passed, went on to be with the Lord. And so they were you know, happy and, uh, and well receptive of me and my wife. When we got here, my wife and I, we, we came here uh, alone with just she and I. We were, you know, ministering and doing what God was calling us to do. And the late uh, First Lady, Sister Alberta Zimmerman, she would always tease us that we were just a family of two. And, um, and you know, it would be time for us expanding and so we um, expanded and Alan um, yeah, was born. The birth of our son, Alan S. Potts, was a wonderful addition to our family. It brought us closer together as we begin to, to raise and rear him in the way that he should go. He has brought joy to our lives. Great Abyssini was excited that we were having um, our, our, our baby. And, um, and a baby was born into the Great Abyssinia Church by their pastor, which has never been done um, in, their, in their history. The relationship between my son, Alan Nespas II, and his dad, Alan, is inseparable. Although he looks exactly like his mother, him and his dad are the best of buddies. Reverend Potts is an excellent father. Under the dynamic and progressive leadership of Reverend Alan S. Potts, Greater Abyssinian Baptist Church has accomplished several initiatives over the past 10 years. Changed organizations to ministries, established youth ministry, appointed the first woman to the Board of Trustees, 
purchased a 14-seat church van, initiated Maudie Thursday service, capital improvement for the church, purchased church marquee, church renovation projects, children's church established, initiated the debt-free campaign, and in 2005 eliminated $650,000 in church debt. The church restored and renovated, just to name a few outstanding projects led by our pastor, the Reverend Alan S. Potts, Senior Pastor of Greater Abyssinian Baptist Church. Um, we brought about a vision, seeking to uh, move to um, get a vision to where we could work our ministry out of and to bring a sense of unity uh, with new pastor and people. Um, one of the things that um, I believe helped us is, is as we went forward in our whole vision of moving from clubs and auxiliaries um, to really ministries. Because if we're going to be a church on the cutting edge, we felt that we couldn't be you know, clubs, but we have to be ministries because the church is about ministry. And once we did that, we got a, a different focus and outlook on what the church really was about. God gave us what we're working out of now, uh, what we consider our mom's mandate, um, mobilize, unify missions, and serve. And from there, we've been trying to mobilize our church and unify us so that we could be a church that's on the cutting edge to make a difference not only on the inside, but yet on the outside in our community. To my husband, Alan, um, who's celebrating his 10th year pastor anniversary, um, I first want to say to you, congratulations to you. Um, I'm so proud of how, um, what God has done thus far in our lives as you celebrate 10 years. As I leave these words of encouragement with you, I would say that to lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, continue to acknowledge God, for He shall direct your path. Um, continue to look to the hills from which cometh your help, and your help coming from the Lord. I love you dearly. I share with you from day one that whatever comes our way, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So, 10 years later, I still stand on that promise. I love you. I'm proud of you. And may you continue to keep on keeping on. Ten years. Wow. How it has come and gone. I realized I couldn't do it by myself. And I, I, I just want to just thank um, all of those who played a part in making sure that this ministry had been what God wanted to be. First of all, I have to thank my wife who came here with me 10 years ago. And in our sharing through our ups and our downs as it relates to the church, God has blessed us. And I want to thank you, uh, Angie, for uh, being here with me and being the support that I need throughout this ministry. I want to thank the, the joint ministry, the joint board, who has come and has, um, has, has supported and has really become a backbone to help to see that, Pastor, you're taking us on the right track to where God was doing it because without you, our ministerial focus would not have come and has gelled the way it is. And how can I not say thank you to my ministerial staff, those of whom I found here when I got here and then those who've come to accept me. I, I wanna thank um, you for your undying support uh, to our ministry that whatever pastor was trying to do and trying to be about, you came on board and you worked it out. I wanna thank um, you the Richards, I want to thank you Edna Barfield. I even want to thank Minister James Johnson who is no longer with us but has moved on. Ella Matish, um, Sister um, Shirley Ward. We, we want to thank you for how you have played a part in our ministry. To the Great Abyssinia Baptist Church family, you, uh, you have given me your support, you have put your trust in me. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, following this pastor, following this leadership. Without you, I wouldn't be who I am. And I recognize that from the bottom of my heart. I just want to say thank you. I love you. And God is doing great and wonderful things with us. For eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, but God has in store for us. And if we keep our hands on the plow and do what God is calling us to do with a sincerity of heart, as we are continuing to be a church determined to take Jesus seriously, God is going to bring about moms, for that's what it's all about, mission ministry as we move ahead in the years to come. Love you all. God continue to bless us.